Every MMO needs a simulation to drive the economy and back-end interactions. Star Citizens is called Quantum. Not Quanta, Quantum. And it's got an absolute ton of intricacies that promise to make Star Citizen one of the most dynamic and engaging game spaces to live in. While it has started to be added to the game, it still has a long way to go before we actually can take it seriously. In this video, I'll explain the major aspects of this simulation, what they'll add to the game, and how the whole thing is being actively worked on right now. If you'd like a more in-depth look at the simulation and the history of its development at the studio, I've made a longer and higher quality video that goes deeper into the foundations of this system, available to all members on Patreon, YouTube, and Twitch. Thank you for coming to My Tomato Talk. First, let's look at the macro simulation of AI in this system, how it works, and how it will affect us. Star Citizen has defined its plan of a 9 to 1 AI to human ratio for years. This doesn't mean you will see 9 characters for every player you encounter. It's always specified that this is referring to the AI, not NPCs. No, this number is key because it is indicative of the simulation. Most of our encounters with this game between refueling, shopping, fighting, mining, and more will directly involve an AI. It might not be exactly 90%, but you get the idea. Humans are a small part of this game. But when you consider that there are many AI able to simulate interactions with you all throughout the game, you also have to think about what determines when and why they're able to. I mean, you can't just have every pirate in a 400 kilometer radius attack you all at once, right? There needs to be some level of probability, a reason to calculate your risks, consequences, and rewards when you go into that new area. Probability volumes are custom tailored filters that sit on every point of interest in the galaxy. These volumes extend out hundreds of kilometers from our location and determine a multitude of statistics like the presence of security, a cargo hauler, or a pirate AI. In the example on screen, these stats are represented by blue, green, and red curves, respectively. You can see that high security presence close to a space station allows for a high level of haulers due to a low level of pirates, which flips on itself the further you move from the destination. However, anything from a special event to a large amount of negative activity could push the piracy curve up, causing less cargo haulers to make it to that station during their trip. As you can see, these curves are a function of time, so the plan is likely for these probabilities to be updated in real time as you fly around the area. And while security would remain the same for now, it is meant to slowly compensate for the increase in piracy and pump in more security personnel using the quantum system. Now in the beginning of this video I mentioned another word, quanta. Quanta are the individual AI being simulated by the system with their own proficiencies, which determine how good they are at specific jobs, and traits, which determine what they prefer personally. These traits will begin with morality and aggression levels, determining which missions an NPC might choose based on a combination of the two, but is expected to expand in the future. These quanta will be the data points that run throughout the system, paying attention to things like the economy, activity areas, risk, and more. So probability volumes will define AI interactions around locations, and quanta will assist in mission assignment and the underlying economic structure of the game. But not all of these AI can be rendered all the time, nor do they need to be. In fact, probability volume AI will be deleted as soon as the event they are spawned for is over. But quanta are another story. In order to optimize all of this activity in the background going on in the star system that you're in, the studio has developed a method by which AI will exist and persist dynamically based on player presence in the background while also being able to be physicalized and rendered for all of the animations and other things that a normal NPC would do in the game. These are called virtual AI. Some of the major things surrounding virtual AI aren't necessarily new to gaming. One of the best examples of something like this is the sort of thing in Shadow of Mordor games, in which you can obtain a nemesis who knows and remembers you between play sessions and conflicts. Killed you? Now you're back? Just my rotten luck! In Star Citizen, this system goes deeper, 
tracking AI activities such as fighting, mining, trading, and visiting locations, and allowing them to use the same systems that players do, like ATC, trade terminals, and bars. These virtual AI can develop reputations in-game, create relationships that affect the way your organizations respond to them, and overall develop their own life and persona in the verse. In order to optimize the process, as said, they will not exist rendered in the game, but will remain just a lightweight AI data point simulating itself in the background. Not until a player comes into range will the AI be rendered as a subsumption AI. Subsumption is the logic system behind these characters which drives their actions from reacting to players to deciding to go to a restaurant or taking their ship and flying off to another location. As an AI develops and moves throughout the game, they will transition between these states of lightweight virtual and subsumption based on the game's needs. This all sounds incredibly impressive too, but it hasn't been proven yet. In fact, the whole quantum system has only recently begun to be added. The first real reveal of the virtual AI system though, we'll be getting as the new version of the bounty hunting profession. So let's talk about that and what it will include. Bounty hunting is one of those weird professions in Star Citizen that's being built in pieces. It's a bit like exploration. Rather than getting a set of tools or a ship or a new location that unlocks gameplay, bounty hunting has always been possible with a wide variety of experience and equipment. All you need to do is accept a bounty and you're basically guided to your target. But for the profession to make any progress, it continues to require these additions from far and wide. A tracking app needs to work in the movie glass. A security system needs to work at all locales. The NPC scheduler needs to spawn NPCs based on virtual AI presence. An air traffic control needs to be able to communicate with the rest of the game. While there are other things that will improve the profession like non-lethal weapons, the ability to carry bodies, and a relaxation of armistice zones, these original additions I mentioned will be included in Bounty Hunter V2 gameplay. It's a pretty big expansion of the profession and might actually make it a worthwhile regular gameplay option. With this update, we will see the first inclusion of the virtual AI system. With this application, the AI involved will be able to tally up a list of crimes, violations, places landed, and other key details that a normal criminal might have. And then the game will allow the player to figure those details out in their own ways. The method by which this information will be acquired is relatively unknown still besides that tracking app that I had mentioned. But this first version of virtual AI will likely be our best look at how the quantum simulation will work for us in the future. Unfortunately, we'll still be waiting a while for that, as the work to get there isn't scheduled until Q1 of next year, which likely means no sooner than Q2 of next year. In the meantime, the system is still being developed in other ways. Quanta has already been added to the game in small doses as of 3.17, both fuel and repair services are linked into the dynamic environment and fluctuate in price based on location and other factors. It's not very noticeable as there are no commodities or actual trading involved, but this first edition seems to be mainly testing with these features and environmental missions. Besides that, the progress tracker gives us insight into scheduled tasks for these features. However, we shouldn't assume these diagrams indicate release times. For that, I would suggest keeping up with the monthly progress reports that I cover every month on this channel. What we can see here is that dynamic population, the NPC scheduler, probability volumes, the full quantum simulation, and virtual AI service are all seeing or have seen work this year. So we can probably expect to hear some form of update later this year. While this video goes over the planned simulation, you can find an even deeper look at the inner workings, the history of the development and future plans of the entire economy in Star Citizen, including a look at how factories will be set up by players, economic nodes will develop over time, and a deeper look into the full quantum system. Either by becoming a YouTube channel member down below or joining up on Patreon, you'll get access to this video and all the rest I've made this year. I release exclusive videos to my members and my Twitch subscribers every month with more depth and context around the development of Star Citizen. Consider joining if you like, or you can just subscribe if you want more of this. And if this channel isn't enough, I have a second YouTube channel, Space Tomato 2, where I post gameplay, stream highlights, and general news. And to be quite honest, I just want to take a moment to thank everybody for watching this video and being a part of this community. 
It is absolutely amazing to get to work on these videos for all of you every week, and I'm just grateful that you all come to watch them. If you watched all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much, and I hope you have a fantastic week. I hope you learned something in this video, and I definitely hope I get to catch you in the next one.